always follow the money. Like uh, Facebook, Google, they're all investing heavily in AR, VR because I think we're in the brink of the whole worldwide community understanding these technologies and seeing how they will fit realistically into our everyday. This is where it all begins, so say goodbye to all your fears, all your doubts, this is where they die. This is where we come to win, we come to fly. This is where we make our dreams come to life. Welcome to Innovation City. Welcome to Innovation City, a podcast featuring the innovators, disruptors, and creators who are making things happen today. My name is Michael T. Johnson, and I'm here with my co-host, Tyler Kelly, and we are at Venture Cafe Miami tonight. So Venture Cafe is the largest gathering of entrepreneurs and innovators anywhere in the world. So tonight, we're very excited because we have Mauricio Ferraza with us. Mauricio, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Welcome. So Mauricio is the chairperson at the Miami Animation and Gaming International Complex, which is at Miami-Dade College. And you've been working with animation production for film and TV for over 25 years. Uh, you have a BA in advertising and marketing, MFA in computer animation. And for 14 years, you worked with Univision, or as I should say, Univision. There you go. Yeah. Communications, the leading Spanish network in the country. And then you founded MIA a Animation. That's correct. And launched the MIA Animation Conference and Festival. And now you're um, at, my, at Miami-Dade doing this uh, magic program, which is Miami Animation and Gaming International Complex. So welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Magic. Tell me about magic. What is this? Magic was uh, born uh, five years ago, the concept. It's a full animation and video game development studio okay. inside Miami Dade College. And uh, the, the, the center, which is a full studio, houses two academic programs, one in animation and game art. Animation being the art of animation, game art creating assets for a video game. So when you're playing a video game, everything that you're seeing, that's game art. And then we have another track, which is game development and design, and that's programming, coding, and those are the, the, the true architects of the video game. Uh, both programs are 100% industry oriented. Uh, the students in the first year, they learn core fundamentals for both tracks. In the second year, they're already working with the industry. Uh, one of our partners, well, some of our partners are Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Walt Disney, Telltale Games, Activision. Locally, our partners are Viacom International, uh, Discovery Latin America, Univision, Telemundo. The goal of the program is really to um, get high school students, uh, train them on a skill that will make that uh, student uh, uh, employable. Uh, so in two years now, we have graduated two cohorts and about 80% of the students have found jobs. They're employed and working, earning uh, decent salaries wow. in our state here in Florida, the, uh, an animation entry level position pays $48,000 a year. And uh, um, if you are a programmer in video games, it's $98,000 a year. Starting? So it's starting. Wow. Yes. wow. That's it's a good living amazing. for a starting yes. salary. Yeah. Much harder though. Yes. <laughs> but so primarily that's what we do at Magic. We get kids, uh, a little bit about Miami Day College, like it's the largest education institution in the country. Yeah. And uh, uh, we graduate more Latin American, uh, more Latins and uh, African Americans than any other institution in the country. Yeah. We do not say no. So papers, no papers, English, no English, money, no money. We will take you. 45% um, uh, of our students come from below poverty level. So it's a true gem of this community. We pretty much educate everybody who wants to be educated. Uh, so it's very, very gratifying to get a student coming from high school, graduating in our program with a job and being an acting citizen of our community, so it's good. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, computer animation. Yeah, um, I mean, so I've I have a background in video and cinematography, and like right. maybe this much, a tiny bit of animation, but I feel like that that whole uh, the whole area of animation is just vast. Like, if you think you know something, there's infinite to know about it. I think. Just so you know, my masters I got in particle dynamics. Yeah. 
which you probably don't know what it is, but in animation, it's the physics in animation. So that's how far we go. Like uh, you have from understanding, you know, uh, anatomy to creating a skeleton because you need to create a skeleton for a character to move, walk, dance, laugh. But I went deeper into physics because I love physics. Yeah. And I got my thesis in particle dynamics, which we animate billions of particles to create waterfalls, oceans, you know, uh, 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 any natural systems. So yes, you are right. That's how far animation goes. What's amazing about animation is that you can go tomorrow to watch any animated movie with your three-year-old daughter and your nine-year-old grandma, and everybody will have fun. Yeah. So it's a medium that it's a very tedious and very difficult to produce and to to make a feature film takes about four to five years with 500 animators but just so just to put things into perspective you know snow white was done in 1937 by walt disney and they're still selling party <laughs> supplies and and dresses yeah so when you get the right story animation is forever it's a medium that everybody understands uh, no matter what age you are, and, and it's very gratifying when you hit that story. Talk about story, you got to have a good story. That's when you have the hit that will live for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. So, yeah. so in your realm, like, so we, we talk, you just talked about like Snow White from the 30s, which I mean, all that stuff was like hand drawn. Hand drawn. But then you go to today where we have technology that allows you to do things that I don't even think people understand what's happening what does that do to the storytelling process like what can we do today with the storytelling process that's going to blow people's minds well pretty much everything with 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 animation and computer animation but just also you mentioned 1937 handmade hand drawn to create one second in animation you need 24 frames 24 frames equals 24 drawings so just do the math 180 minutes in a feature film 24 drawings per second. It's, I don't know how many thousands of drawings. Nowadays we are, you know, we do not do that anymore unless it's a film that is artistic or you may want to make a statement today. It's all computerized, it's computer animation. So the computer does a lot of the drawing for you. Uh, but it's amazing because you pretty much, you know, you have a story, you can tell it, you know, with this medium. Uh, for 20 years, I did cartoons, and also I worked for Univision, where I did a lot of graphics for uh, uh, main, you know, mainstream shows, the, the Grammys and the World Cup. Now a whole other uh, uh, verticals are being opened up uh, uh, for these technologies, like healthcare, with vir virtual reality and augmented reality. No longer uh, the entertainment industry is the only ones utilizing these technologies. Uh, healthcare, huge, education, um, uh, science, you know, pretty much every single vertical right now, especially here in our community, uh, uh, hospitality, logistics, real estate. Somehow, it's not quite happening yet, but everybody's really curious on how these technologies can either cut costs or you know, increase your profits. So all my life I did cartoons, and now I'm, I, I work very closely with the Baptist Health uh, here, creating AR simulations. So I tell my mom that I'm almost a doctor now, so like <laughs> yeah. I can say that, yes, I'm doing something important. But it's very exciting times right now for us because we were kind of locked up in the, in the entertainment industry, and now, especially healthcare, we're doing a lot with psychology and uh, psychotherapy, VR treatment for phobias, uh, 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 training, a lot of training through uh, AR technologies where you get nurses trained in the operating room, everything virtual. So it's really exciting. So tell me a little bit more about, especially I think that's interesting is the medical applications because yes. my, like, my familiarity with AR and VR is like playing Pokemon Go with my kids sure. and like maybe some 3D tours in the real estate. But it sounds like there's a lot of mm -hmm. like very beneficial applications to that yes. technology. So yes. like specifically what's happening that right now, for example, just you, you play video games, right? Yeah. Same, same structure. Uh, we have built a surgery room for Baptist health for a nurse training, excuse me. And, uh, pretty much, uh, it's for the uh, ER. 
So the nurses, they need to practice to pass a, a certification test. It's just a simulation. They are in a operating room exactly like the ones they have at Baptist or any hospital. And they have to make very, very rapid decisions on what instruments, which instrument is which. You know, whatever they are asking us, okay, this person, after uh, uh, going through these five levels of simulation, they need to come out knowing this amount of information. Same structure as a video game, uh, which, by, by the way, it's, it's perfect for education because a video game is small task, small task, small task, go. Next level. Small task, small task, small task, go. Next level. So we structure it the same exact way, and, but now instead of earning, I don't know, five million gold coins, like a, you're actually learning a, a, a trade, a skill. That's how we're structuring right now. The other project that we have with them is for uh, uh, phobias. Uh, with virtual reality, we immerse a patient that cannot fly, for example, or get into a plane. And through you know, levels, easy, we're easing the, the, the patient in, and you can apply that in any kind of phobia or any kind of treatment. Everything is really, <laughs> we're at a point where we're trying a lot and we're doing a lot. Uh, magic has a small research component. That's not what we do. Miami Dade College is not a research institution, but I'm just curious and I like to do this kind of stuff. So we're trying to work with our community to develop possible ways they can utilize these technologies, which in the, when, in the end will create jobs. So again, remember I'm the job creators in chief. So yeah. my, my mission is always to try to find ways to create jobs for our students. So for you, if that's, that makes sense at all. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah. So for you, that's the number one driver. You're going to create jobs, yeah. economic, economic opportunities yes. for people. And that yeah. kind of goes along with Miami Dade's mission. Yes. Which I think is amazing that basically making education accessible to Everybody. anybody. Anybody. And I love it. I mean, and you probably do too, that you're creating jobs now, not 10 years from now. I need the jobs now. <laughs> so you, so they're, you, going, you, they're going through my program right now and when they get out. And uh, funny, healthcare has been a huge partner. We just signed an agreement with Nicolaus Children's Hospital, which used to be the Miami Children's Hospital. Huge institution. And they're now currently employing four of our students because they're developing this internal professional training for their doctors and nurses and they created this internal educational department and of course you know animation being a very, a very visual you know a, a medium so now students are getting good paying jobs you know working uh, at, at Nicolaus uh, Children's Hospital uh, Discovery Latin America another one of our partners they're employing our students again uh, also and several and smaller studios that are popping up here in Miami thank God yeah so for you, like, what's the biggest challenge you see? Is it that maybe either people just don't even know that these kind of opportunities exist, or is it skills, or what is it? So the skill training, we got it down packed. I mean, we have 20 faculty today at Magic. Most of them are adjunct because they are in the industry. They currently work you know, here in Miami. My biggest challenge really is convincing businesses to either you know, uh, utilize these technologies, creating jobs, and just uh, educating everybody. I go around, I've come here to a venture cafe two times already for the takeover and I bring the program and I bring everything. So that's the biggest challenge in Miami. We do not have an animation industry. We do not have a video game industry like even Houston has more than we do. Probably St. Louis has more than we do. So it's, we're putting it together and little by little it's working. Like. Uh, because we are uh, 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 providing you know, employers with talent. So once you know that you have uh, uh, talent to hire, you know, yeah. it's easier. Yeah. So you know, when we talk about jobs 10 years, 15, or when, specifically when we talk about like AR and VR in the mm -hmm. future, yeah. it's exciting, the possibilities. But what you're doing is AR and VR for right now. So tell us about like what's happening like right now. What's relevant in those spaces? Right now, if I had to pick a vertical in industry that is really, really adopting these technologies, healthcare. Logistics is huge for, here in Miami, is aviation and logistics 
is one of our number one industry. The industry that most hire in Miami is the, the Port of Miami and the Miami International Airport. So we're creating trainings for uh, crane operating trainings virtually. Uh, that is cost, uh, cutting costs for the Port of Miami. Now they have to send everybody to Baltimore to get trained over there and bring them back. We're creating a simulation that you can get trained on how to operate those cranes you know, here at home, in your living room. So basically anything that will not change in the next 50 years, welding, nursing, uh, it is worth investing in these technologies. Because it's not cheap. I mean, like a, you have to create the simulation that is accurate, that it will actually do the job and train your, your employer, employee. But uh, if it's a technology that is gonna change every year, it's not worth the investment. But yeah. that's where we're, at, where, where we're gaining traction right now here. And we're doing it now, right that's now. That's good, that's good. <laughs> so if, if, this is, if this is an interesting career path to me, like, or to someone out there, what, what makes a good candidate for somebody to go through your program? That's the beauty of it. Everybody thinks that to be an animator, you need to be an artist, and you don't. Uh, the pipeline is so, uh, so extensive, the production pipeline. You do start with char character concepts and a story, which is more artistic. Immediately after that, you go into modeling, which is not, it's very technical, rigging, texturing, animating, post-production. Most students that come uh, uh, into the program, some of them are very artistic, amazing talent, by the way. Others are not so much, but within the two years, they will find where they will fall. Some of them, you think they're gonna go this direction and, and, and end up being amazing, like a technical artist. And uh, so it's, it's pretty accommodating, like a, and VR, AR, the same thing. VR and AR is basically built upon the animation track and the uh, game development uh, design track. You need assets, you need artists to model your assets, you know, the surgery room or the video game, and you need the programmers to program the interactions. Uh, this fall, we're launching a college credit certificate, which is only 15 credits, where in two semesters, you get to understand, learn, and create simulations for AR and VR. So there, this CCC is gonna live on top of both programs. And uh, lots of industry professionals are coming to take this because especially uh, marketing, advertising, you know, this simulations, AR on mobile, they're gaining this gimmicky kind of stuff that you can show in, in an event. So uh, we're starting to get a lot of interest of even professionals. Oh, uh, I mean, the college is incredibly affordable. <laughs> So like uh, one credit is $100. So all, all you need to do really is the willing and time to, to, to put in this education and you get out with a very, very uh, good uh, uh, either diploma or a college credit certificate that will further you in your career or at least open your mind to uh, future opportunities. Yeah. So I, I wanna shift gears from maybe from a student to I mean, we're at Venture Cafe tonight, a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of people in the innovation space. So you've talked about applications in medical and a lot of established businesses and things like that. But what about people in maybe the startup space or in kind of emerging technologies or things like that? What should they be thinking about that's gonna help them move forward in the future that has to do with kind of your industry? So VR has been, here for 20 years. I've been waiting for this moment for about 30. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you have ever heard of Seagraph. Seagraph is our largest. I've been, we've been going to Seagraph for 20 years and we went from having a whole capsule, you know, with to where we are right now. Where we are right now, it's really exciting. We're very, very close to have wearables, you know, like the, uh, the, the goggles yeah. for $300, $400. And that's where we need to be. And the whole world can purchase one. I would just explore these possibilities because they're very real. Uh, Apple is launching you know, the AR kit on the Apple phone. Um, and always follow the money. Like uh, Facebook, Google, they're all investing heavily in AR, VR because I think we're in the brink of you know, the whole worldwide community understanding these technologies and seeing how they will fit uh, realistically into our everyday. 
there are apps now that you have measuring tapes that are virtual that you know little things like that eventually when everybody starts actually utilizing these technologies and being comfortable with them uh, that's where things are going to take off yeah. so everybody who has an idea or uh, an entrepreneur or a business I would just incentive them just to understand what these technologies do and and maybe if 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 it applies to to their mission and their product and whatever they're trying to you know either innovate or disrupt use it because we're almost there I think we're not there yet but we're we're getting there yeah so what are you, what are you personally most excited about in this space augmented reality 100% uh, augmented reality is it, it, it adds to everybody's experience virtual reality is still a single you know you have to your stop own and, yes yeah. experience it's you with yourself i'm a community guy <laughs> yeah i like when we create things that everybody can share and use and move forward and learn and augmented reality you know even these mobile apps ars they're taking over and uh we're doing a lot of them it's getting easier and easier the technology is getting better and better the mobile phones are getting better and better in terms of memory, in terms of you know uh, speed that you can run the simulation. Yeah, and I think I'm very excited. I love AR. Yeah. I'm excited about that too. I, mean, <laughs> I, I can just uh, and picture a world where you know you have your your goggles yep. or your contact lenses and and applications. The internet is at your. There it's, it's there, right? Applications are endless. I can't wait for the day that you just put your phone on top of a building. And a sign from a window will come out for rent. Click here, you call the owner. It'll be browsing the internet in real life. Like you don't have to go to a computer. That bothers me. I, I hate desktops and I feel like that I'm, you know, trapped on that desk. I cannot wait for the day that we don't need any of that, the hardware, that everything will be available either through, you know, your glasses, your it is already. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the HoloLenses with Microsoft. No. It's, uh, Microsoft has developed the HoloLenses. Right now it's $3,000 for developers. Yeah. But it is a computer, untethered, no cables, a computer in your glasses, and you can literally watch Netflix. You can open your computer in front of you. You can open 10 screens. You can email. You can play games. You can do several uh, stuff. That's mostly the platform that, you, that we use for the training for healthcare. And it's almost there. Like next year, Microsoft is launching HoloLens is for everybody. And little wow. by little, yeah, it's cool. Wow. It's a it's a full blown computer. Full blown computer in your in your right now the the goggles are bulky and a little bit heavy, okay. but I'm telling you we're almost there. I cannot wow. wait to throw out my desktop. Yeah, <laughs> I mean think about think about the world we live in where you can get a pair of of glasses with a computer, and even like three thousand dollars is not. That's the price of a Mac, right? Yeah, that's not everybody's <laughs> price point. No, right now it's but not. If you, but if you yeah. think about a cell phone, a cell phone's about a thousand bucks, but everybody's. Everybody pays for it over two years, so everybody has one. Yeah. So, I mean, the accessibility of that device is going to be yep. a yeah. game changer. Once we get to the $600, $500 range, like a, a family hold can purchase one, and then that's it. Yeah. And then, like, uh, right now there's a shortage of content uh, uh, for both AR and VR. Um, in the industry, there's a rush to produce content because they want to win. Have you heard of Magic Leap? A you little bit, up. but I'm not super. You familiar. know, I heard the name today for the oh, first time. Magic yeah. Leap, four billion dollar startup here in Boca Raton, and they're going to be releasing their augmented reality goggles, I think, next month. Wow. Uh, so uh, most of the investment by Google, uh, Facebook bought Oculus, uh, Microsoft Hololens is the giant. I always follow the money. If the money is going in that direction, all right. So there's. Uh, so it's about to happen, I think, I hope. I've been waiting for 25 years. So. Yeah, <laughs> this is exciting. So for, for people that want to um, get involved with Magic, with, with the program at Miami-Dade, how can they get involved? All welcome. Um, just go primarily to our website and you will get all our information. It's www.mdc.edu forward slash magic. And it's a one stop. You can register. You can get more information. All, all our programs are listed there. Um, yep. Social. 
everything we're on everything twitter instagram twitch um, uh, youtube same uh, uh, magic underscore mdc okay well mauricio this has been a fascinating conversation thank you mauricio thank you so much for having me again thanks a lot for more episodes visit innovationcity.co be sure to subscribe rate and review and if you're in miami visit us on thursday nights details are at venturecafemiami.org and be sure to connect with us on social at we are slam and at venture cafe mia thanks for listening this is where it all begins so say goodbye to all your fears all your doubts this is where they die this is where we come to win we come to fly this is where we make our dreams come to life welcome to innovation